Hello students, I am Purabhi Das, teaching in Kendra Vidyalaya Sector 8, R.K. Puram, Delhi. Today we are going to discuss the chapter, Principle of Inheritance and Variations, under which we are going to discuss the following topics. Law of Segregation, Law of Independent Assortment, Test Cross, Law of Incomplete Dominance and Co-Dominance. Earlier, you have studied about the first law of Mandel, that is, law of dominance. Let's start with our discussion from law of segregation. Now, as you see in the picture, there is a cross between purple and white flower. The purple is dominant, having the genotype capital P, capital P. The white recessive, having the genotype small p and small p. Now, during gamete formation, each of these alleles get separated and then these two alleles get together during hybrid formation. So each gamete receive one allele. And so these alleles they separate during gamete formation. The analogy can be seen during the process of meiosis. Let us recall meiosis that you have studied. Now during anaphase one, as you know, that the chromosomes, the homologous chromosomes get separated. In the same way, when the Mandel studied in the second law, the law of segregation, the two alleles get separated. Till now, we talked about the monohybrid cross. Now, let us see what happens in dihybrid cross. What is the meaning of dihybrid cross? Dihybrid means the plants that are differing in two characters. So, we cross a plant which differs in two characters. Mandel in his dihybrid cross, he considered two characters. The one, the form of seed, whether it was round or wrinkled, and the color of cotyledon, whether it is a yellow or green. Now, when he crossed the two plants, what was the result? Let us see and analyze the result. In the F1 generation, what he found? He found all yellow round. So, the yellow round dominant. And the genotype is written as capital R, small r, capital Y, and small y. Now, the next step that he did to raise the F2 generation by self-pollination. What was the result? Now, when we draw a punic square and analyze the result, we see that the dihybrid ratio which was obtained was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 of which the nine were yellow round, the three were green round, the three were yellow wrinkled, and only one was green wrinkled. This result can be depicted in the form of Punic Square as shown in the picture. So now let's have a quick summary of the dihybrid cross. The parents which are represented by capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y for the round yellow color that was dominant and small r, small r, small y and small y for the recessive character and that is wrinkle and green. So the gametes after fusion produced the F1 generation which were all round yellow, capital R, small r, capital Y and small y. Now let us see what were the results. So what you found in the cross? Now, you found that there are two types parental and two types new combination. Now, what were these parental types? The yellow round and green wrinkled. And what were the new combinations? The yellow wrinkled and green round. So, what he concluded? That the inheritance is independent and there is random assortment of chromosomes. That means there is random alignment of the chromosomes. Now, this can be very well understood with the help of meiosis. Let us recall meiosis where there is a separation of homologous chromosomes and then during the metaphase and the anaphase there is alignment of the chromosomes. So, there is the same analogy which we can found in the dihybrid cross. So, are we in a position to give a statement for the second law? Yes. The second law is the law of segregation and the third law, the law of independent assortment. We can state law of independent assortment as the follows. 
the inheritance of one trait has no effect of inheritance of other caused by gene suffering a random assortment of chromosomes during meiosis. We have studied about the homozygous and heterozygous conditions. But have you ever thought how to find out the genotype of a heterozygous condition? Because the heterozygous condition can be written as capital P, capital P or capital P, small p. So is a technique we call it a test cross. So basically a test cross is used to determine the unknown genotype of a dominant phenotype. So it is crossed with a homozygous recessive. Here is an example. A white color flower which is recessive having small p and small p is crossed with a dominant phenotype and that is purple color. Now this purple color it exists in two conditions. Heterozygous conditions the capital P capital P and capital P and small p. Now we have to find out that whether this phenotype exists in heterozygous condition or homozygous condition. Now to test this we cross the white flower with purple flower first with a homozygous condition and the next with a heterozygous condition. Now let us see what happens when we cross the recessive flower that is the white flower with the purple homozygous condition what is the result. After the cross we find that when the white flower is crossed with the homozygous condition all the plants were purple all the flowers were purple. On the other hand when the white flower was crossed with heterozygous conditions we find that half of the flowers were purple and the half were white. So that is how we determine that if whether the known genotype is a heterozygous condition or homozygous condition. If we get all the purple flowers then it is a homozygous condition that is the dominant phenotype is having capital P capital P. On the other hand if we get 50-50 that is half of the flowers are purple and the half of the flowers are white then that means it is a heterozygous condition and the dominant phenotype is having capital P and small p. Now let us study a very interesting phenomenon that is called incomplete dominance. Now this shows an interaction of genes. Till now you have studied about the law of dominance where you studied that a particular character is dominant over another character. But now this is a very interesting phenomenon which has been observed in a 4 o'clock plant and snapdragon where there are two kind of flowers the red and white. When these red flower and the white flower were crossed let us see what were the result. In the F1 generation what happened? Oh we got the pink flowers. Now what is the reason of having the pink flowers? According to law of dominance it should have been red flower because red is dominant over white. What is the reason of being having a pink color? Let us find out. Now we get a pink color in the F1 generation that means the red is not completely dominant over the white instead an intermediate color has been obtained. Now when you look into the checkerboard if the egg is represented by capital R capital R and the white represented by small r and small r the pink color that obtained has a genotype capital R small r. But in the F3 generation we get the plants one red two pink and one white. The genotypic ratio becomes 1 is to 2 is to 1 but it is the same as the phenotypic ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now can you recall the monohybrid cross where we found the ratio 3 is to 1. So this is a different kind of interaction where we find a different genotypic ratio a different phenotypic ratio but the genotypic and the phenotypic ratio are same in the case of incomplete dominance. One red 
two pink and one white. We get one red flower, two pink flowers and one white. So, the denitripic ratio becomes 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, now let us conclude the two laws. An intermediate color pink is obtained. Second, no specific gene for pink flowers. That means, why the pink color obtained? Because there had been no specific genes. The red was dominant and the white was recessive, but the pink color was an intermediate between the red and white. So, the law states that the dominant phenotype is not completely dominant over recessive and intermediate color is obtained. Now, let us have a very interesting phenomenon which is called co-dominance. Initially, you have seen that in incomplete dominance, the red color was not completely dominant over the white and we got an intermediate color. But in this particular case, which is a genetic mechanism which operate in ABO blood group of men. The F1 resemble both parents. That means, both have equal share. So, they are controlled by a gene of three alleles, IA, IB and I. So, this particular character here having three alleles instead of two. So, it is a case of multiple allelism. So, what is the difference between the incomplete dominance and co-dominance? In the case of incomplete dominance, an intermediate color was obtained between the red and white. But in the case of co-dominance, both the dominant alleles, they shared each other and they produce a new phenotype. They both express themselves. Now, let us have a study on the genetic basis of blood crops which are found in men. Now, in men, there are four blood crops A, B, AB and O. Now, let us see what are the genotypes of each of these phenotypes. The blood group A has the genotype IA, IA or I capital A small i. These are the alleles of the blood groups. The B blood group will have I capital B, I capital B or I capital B or small i. Now, let us see the AB blood group. AB blood group has the genotype capital IB, capital IB. On the other hand, the O blood group will have both the alleles in the recessive condition. That means, when both the alleles are in recessive condition, then we have a different phenotype and that is O blood group. Now, let us come to AB blood group. So, the AB blood group in the antigen on the RBC has both the antigen for A and B. So, it is a universal recipient. So, this AB blood group is a new phenotype which was produced by combination of the dominant allele of A and the dominant allele of B. Now, if you look into the picture, you can clearly understand that the two dominant alleles I A and I B, they are present together. Both expresses and the new phenotypes A B. The new phenotype A B has a different kind of alleles, they have got different kind of alleles as compared to type A and type B. So, after studying all this, let us summarize the differences between co-dominance and incomplete dominance. In the co-dominance, the both the alleles show their effects. On the other hand, incomplete dominance, both alleles blend their effects. And in the co-dominance, there is no blending of effects. Now, let us have a quick revision of the topics that we have studied. The first, the two alleles controlling each character separate during gamete formation. Second, the dihybrid ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. The test cross helped to find out the genotype of unknown dominant phenotype. Incomplete dominance in the F1 shows intermediate color. And co-dominance, the ABO blood group, the new phenotype appear. Now, try this to check your understanding. What is dihybrid cross? Dihybrid ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, true or false. What is the purpose of test cross? The phenotypic ratio in incomplete dominance is an example of co-dominance in man is and the two alleles separate during formation. 
So that's for today. In the next episode, we are going to discuss with the topics chromosomal theory of inheritance, linkage and recombination. Thank you. Thank you.